Siinä on tietysti se paikallisia ei voi. Everyone, I'm from Indian Embassy. I'm uh, like uh, doing the management for the ambassador. Next ambassador will be actually from South India, from Tirupati. He's coming there. The previous, he already just, uh, you know, went. Yeah, Mr. Sarma went already, you know, to holiday to Delhi, and then acting ambassador, Mr. Paveja, he's now just very busy because uh, his wife is going to the next embassy point will be in Chagreb, so he's, she's going tomorrow. So Mr. Bavec as an acting ambassador just sent his kind regards, but he's completely occupied with the, that, uh, those travels. Uh, without a longer introduction, i like to take you a little... I've been doing this, you know, I'm doing actually when the business is going to India, I'm doing that part, but of course myself residing in India 22 years. <laughs> so, so have some insight also and I have done also university degree which is the you know about philosophy and religion so in that sense but do not ask me questions in any of the Hindi languages linguistic I'm not. <laughs> no. Philosophy yes so so it's about leadership and management and just you know since you are of course you know, well situated in that field, I like to give a little insight with includes the, we could say, the Indian philosophy and cultural aspects, which for us, Finns is a little, you know, kind of a, you know, like uh, Mirka, she has been one of the city leaders who guided you. She has been there in India. In Bangladesh side, she has been there eight years, so I think that's the minimum for me took approximately 10 years just to adjust for the climate and the rest uh, for the culture itself. So leadership and management like, uh, you know, in Finnish we don't actually have a clear definition. Has the, therefore these two words, leadership means the values, attitudes, the direction and management is the administration working under that. So that is a little, how would I say, in English that is, but in Finnish we call arvojohtaja, which is like the president and then the administration is there. So that's called management. I can't be without, because I'm coming from this city, although I'm, nowadays I have moved here to the, I studied in National Defense University. So I moved there already from here, 82. But this is actually my father in that picture, in the early 30s. <laughs> it's from the... somebody sent me that, you know, those years. And therefore I like to kind of say that it's nice you have uh, all these forest, you know, nice cooperation with Russia and like that. But we have had a little... this historical city has some record. If you would come to the other side, there will be a gun which has been floating down by the river, which has you know, came out of the blood when F Finland was actually originally ruled by Sweden. And then later, you know, there was even autonomy time where Russian was ruling. This history has been, I think you already have always, maybe Mir Mirka has told that, but we are now just 20 kilometers from the border. So it's definitely a, you know, place of a lot of, and I have to say one from the, since I'm from the, you know, military background, Finland is actually has more spies and agents than any other country in the whole world. Because Finland is a link where the Russians are looking to the west and the west is looking to the east. So if you go to Helsinki, you may not recognize, but plenty. <laughs> just to say shortly. So this was the scene a little after in late 30s. I don't go much to the background, but even somehow now that this building was approximately safe, but La Peranta was uh, damaged quite uh, well. So even because where I've been, you know, expertised, of course, is this nowadays they call the cyber and 
hybrid, but also the anti-aircraft thing. So it was like my father told, you know, they were bombing the city. Some of the weeks, 100 aircrafts per day. Helsinki got 900. So somehow other Finland was saved. So that sense, although we lost the area, which is now from here to near St. Petersburg, but we still like Marshal Mannerheim, who actually went to India. You know, he said that when the, the war was ultimately stopped by when a um, lady with 10 hands, you can recognize, make a, with, a, with her sword, a sign on the sky. So ultimately, Mother Durka is in charge of the wars. And so it was stopped like that. But uh, of course, there are official reasons. Uh, of course, all the, how would I say, more easily recognized reasons are that, uh, that Finns were a quite tough country to be conquered. So that is also there. So we have had that uh, history and therefore I kind of uh, out of necessity also ended up this uh, National Defense University. But like I said later, I became very much interested about India. And somewhere there, I think it was 95 or something, I ended to West Bengal Mayapur to his premises there and, and became an, uh, a leadership uh, you know, researcher there three to four months per year. And somehow or another even so much so that I kind of uh, you know, the, took a leave of absence from my... Just recent years I have gone back to the military side again. So I was, I've been one of the ISKCON leaders in, in Europe in charge of five countries and uh, the strategy. But nowadays, more like an embassy, but just, you know, when seeing you, I, it's kind of a, just, you know, like meeting a family friends or something like that. It's really a little unique in this, you know, we have been here in this, uh, like I said, I, my home is just a kilometer from here. So this one is what we are normally talking a lot, and you definitely are aware, but I like to little remind that, uh, you know, originally this comes from Chanaka. It's actually under another name, Kaumandaki Niti Sastra, which he compiled in something 1800, but it's, you know, the wisdom has been already there during Kuru, etc. So it, it's a three level thing where actually the strategy includes also the attitudes and values, the great aims like that. But when micro, you know, the, the American officers after the Second World War, they retire, they start to teach this to American business companies. And as they are always a little, how would I say, doing shortcuts, they did a shortcut making that only actually one level. It's mostly just to say it's about maximum operation, something about tactical, but it's not... Uh, what is originally meant to, it's a three-level thing. So they are working with these four double Vs a lot, and they use some strategic word, but like, for example, I call, I call that uh, Microsoft model, but that company already went down. <laughs> so 84% of strategic planning is failing. That is cruel fact. Why it's failing? Because it's not following what Chanaka said, or what in the name of Kaumundaki said. It's a three-level thing. So it has to have an, it's, even I could tell much more, but just to say one thing, when we speak about that, we speak about three-level thing, which is the original and the others. So, so this is just a, just a little, I give you just because we had just an in, Indian embassy was having an, Yoga Day, it's a not a propaganda, but just a campaign all over the world. And of course, Patanjali, Patanjali actually originally comes from Vaisnava background. So he made an, these eight steps to, uh, how would I say, for the people who are very much keen on their bodies. Of course, we all are, no problem with that, but it's, it's not actually how the, how would I say, the only application I mean, in Bhagavad Gita, I said, I gave the science of yoga. 
It's something else than application to the body. So therefore, the main key word there, if you can see, is focus. Which is nowadays they call this, there's a fancy term, this uh, mindfulness. That's in yoga nowadays. Mindfulness has two aspects. Dharana is the empathic listening side. The dhyana is the active state when somebody has listened and start to act. So it's a combination of these. Dharana and dhyana. So, but just to, you know that your lifestyle makes a lot. These first few steps. And asana for the military leaders to be properly situated. It also includes the life state of being student, being, you know, situated as a krihasta, like I think all of you may, may be like that. So pranayam is actually not only the breathing, it's, it's actually activity. So, so this has to be there. And of course, then whatever you do, you have to withdraw your senses to something else. So you can't keep like the simple saying, two stones at the same hand. So therefore, of course, you know, this uh, Pratyahara is there. So this is a science, whether one is a family man, one is, you know, military man, one is uh, in religion or anything. There is no sharpness, which means no action without focus, without this modern day mindfulness. Just to say this mindfulness is a little, uh, you know, I was just in one, Iskorn holds a lot of seminars. One is in the castle in Radades in Belgium. It was old castle which was uh, headquarter of uh, German groups during Second World War. We bought that. And it's a very nice castle. So there was one seminar and there was uh, one huge from Baltics, one man, and there was this empathic listening things, you know, open your hands and like. He stand up and he said, what is this theater? He said, you know, he was roaring. He was just sitting on the other side was the, uh, you saw also this uh, from church, Kimo Ketola. He's heading the church research things. And we were laughing like anything. He said, you know, if you listen, if you like to listen, you, you know how to do that. It's not, so it's not, what is the saying of the stickers? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was in Helsinki, in the, the uh, house of nobility. We had the, there was, uh, it was nice, you know. I could have somewhere, I have some pictures. It was a nice, yeah, there was uh, also, Bachans was there, group called Art of Living. They did that part and, yeah, Ravi Sankar's followers, they are, they are his followers. And uh, I was, last year I was, I think I was one of the main talkers. This year, somehow other the schedule, uh, you know, when there was this meditation part that has to be skipped. So, but this one easily understood or has been understood right or different way. Just to say very simple, since you are coming definitely from the country of spiritualism, and I like to highly say, do not forget that, you know, that's the source. That's even when I was lecturing in Pune and Mumbai, I'm one of the experts which Finland is bringing the education to, you know, to India. And they ask, you know, where did you cut all this knowledge of leadership and all that? I said, dear sir, he was the headmaster of the Pune University. I said, from your own books. <laughs> so, you know, I know that modern trend is nowadays that, you know, oh, we forget the past and, uh, you know, that modern trend comes and goes. Veda means knowledge. Knowledge is knowledge. You can't change that. Can apply that according to the time, place, and this Sakalapatra, according to the time, place, and circumstances, but it's still the knowledge. So when some people are saying they don't, you know, it's ancient and something. I even said to the ambassador, Sarma, who we had a, you know, he, he was athe he's an atheist. <laughs> and myself, I'm Hindu. So it's a little funny, you know, this combination. I said, you know, no, it just shows that the one who doesn't understand the Veda today is just uh, didn't use their brain properly. So it's just, you know, that it has to be applied according to the time, place and circumstance. So you some, like, for example, that aspect, just, you know, this can be used in military. This, I'm teaching based on this to military, high military officers. 
no problem. Just that, you know, there has to be this terminology according, not the Sanskrit ones. I did only 25 credits in Sanskrit and 24 of that I have forget, so, so I'm also not using that too much, but I'm using that, of course, for you, you know. The, Excuse me. Yeah. What's the fine line differentiating between spiritual and metaphysical? Metaphysical includes uh, the, the concepts and ethics. So, spiritual, but sometimes it's a slight line. It's a good question. It's a slight line, but basically saying, let's say, uh, I mean, I think most of us, we are vegetarians. So, that's the material level, but the reason for that is, you know, is uh, I met some years back Dalai Lama and he was highly appreciating our discussion and he, you know, this, although he's not pure vegetarian himself, but there is an ethical non-violence behind that. Of course, there is Ayurveda also behind that, but saying that there is this non-violence aspect. So when one knows that one should not kill, it's not yet spiritual thing. It's actually ethical thing. But it already affects to the material level. So the spiritual thing is that, you know, let's say frankly, Lord himself, Krishna himself is a vegetarian. He likes vegetarian. That's a spiritual level. <laughs> so, so it's ultimately about his likings. So he happened to be like that. Even Lord Shiva, even Mother Durga, you know, Parvati is also vegetarian. So they just like to be like that. So then that's the end of our kind of uh, logic in that sense. But uh, just to say this point, you know, the, you know, or did I made it clear? Enough? Yeah, yeah. Because it's a little, that's a, so still one point. Uh, it's always in the black and white circles of Western spiritualism is that when we take care of the spirit, we don't have to take care of the matter. But no, no, it's, it, all the levels are connected. Ultimately, even you are taking care of the nature, it's Lord's nature. It's Lord's nature, therefore we are taking very good care of that. You know, obulence, whatever is there, the facilities, this is a nice facility, ladies, money, Lakshmi, they are Lords, so therefore we are taking good care. So, so in, in, it's just, a, that's the spiritual vision. So, if they are connected like that, then it makes complete sense. Otherwise, a little difficult because there is an, you know, your philosophy has been misunderstood well in West. <laughs> it has been, like in St. Petersburg, I sometimes have to go. So, I don't like to go, but I have to go. Then it's, an, uh, you know, there are more upper sampradayas than real ones. <laughs> there are more deviated sects than there are real ones. So, it's always about this, you know, oh, we don't care, and oh, we care all, and it's like, like, you know, shifting, so the all levels has to be balanced in order to really understand the point. So that's one of those things which I think has been easily, you know, even at West where there is the religion called Christian, you know, Christian religion has different branch, but the, there was actually knowledge involved. Uh, that was called, uh, I think in English, Gnosticism. Gnostilizers, yeah. It means actually, it's a synonym for Kiana and like related to the Veda. So that means that until 1200, 1229, they had actually these two, like, you know, like the railroad has the two tracks. There was a knowledge aspect of that and there was also the, the religious aspect. So, but it tends to be like that those who are religionists, they are just kind of a sentimentalistic in one group. And those who are more on the philosophy and science, they are on the other group. And it's a little difficult to, you know, combine. So therefore, I mean, I don't speak now you about much about religion, but therefore this word Bhakti Vedanta is really good. Bhakti means the religious aspect. Vedanta means knowledge. So, so therefore, you know, that, that, you know, vision, of course, 
with this, you know, now I don't go much to the religious details. I'm belonging to the normal Vaisnava, you know, background. But uh, just to say that, uh, you know, this has been misunderstood also well here in the West. And uh, Christianity, I mean, she's not definitely that much into this, but happened to be just uh, we went to the embassy and there was this Christian leaders. I have been guiding them also quite a lot. They listen us actually because, you know, they said you, you know, like in that case, Iskon, you have some something to say which is backed up by the even the ambassador. He's complete atheist and he always preaches, but he said, but you have such a logic, you know, can't go over. So that is the level we like to deal with the. You know, so therefore, like I have seen in India many times, you know, they are coming ladies to, you know, while residing in Navadvi Mayapur, they come there and roll, roll over the, you know, to the, you know, you know, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's fine, but it's only for the private thing, you know, it's like, you know, the level to discuss about religion here in West, I'm, I just discuss about with the president of uh, Finland just recently. We actually old friends from Turku times when I was his trustee already that time. So, so we can discuss and he spoke, uh, you know, publicly about spiritual intellectualism, uh, spiritual uh, integration. So, but that I don't go much. I didn't give that any comment to the media when they were asking. So the, this is your area more. And I just put it like that, you know, that uh, because you, who are you, of you are looking at the parks, you know, you know, the prosperity aspect is there. And then the spiritual side is also there. So, you know, the Manu is saying, I mean, that's in Manu Samhita, that, you know, the main, uh, you know, role for the ruler is actually protection. That's like, you know, emphasized in so many books, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bhagavad Gita, how much it explains in everywhere. So we can't avoid that. It's not this business profit thing. Like even when we discussed with her, when we were driving from uh, Helsinki, she said they, she has to take care of the money, but it's not, uh, that's not her interest. It's just, you know, that money is involved. Money is Lakshmi, so Lakshmi is involved to everything, so for sure any business includes that, but there are those which in our terms you could say the Brahmanas, they are, they, they are more interested about knowledge, Kshatriyas, protection. So your environment administration thing is flavored by this, you know, protection aspect or protection the nature, protecting the, the also the rulers, like I just discussed with the mayor, the citizens and like that. So it has different levels, the protection here, I just put them here, but we don't go much to that. But the thing is that the more the protection is there, the more peacefully people can do their duty and the more there is prosperity and peace, you know, in the society. So when we are looking real peace in society, we have to look the protection first. You know, that otherwise then nobody goes, for example, you know, you know, like there's even discussion. I discussed with uh, President Ninis the last year that they are saying, you know, that uh, people are not investing to Finland because it's so near Russia and there is, but, you know, and should we join to NATO and like that. He said, when we are, he speak about the comprehensive security aspect, when we are balanced society like we are, I think we are first safety country in the whole world. He said that. Well, we are the first safety, we are the fifth happiest, and, uh, well, divorcing percent I don't mention, they are too high. And uh, our ladies are actually the most intelligent in the whole world. Sorry to dis disappoint, <laughs> but, but that's a piece of research. So that's there. Men are on the third. So we are quite, you know, high tech. Like I have to say, like I'm working 
we are now bringing to the India government the idea of this, uh, not that it's new idea, but the cyber thing. Finland is very high on that. So we have a lot of, you know, high tech. Some people are saying because there's almost forests here and when you breathe that, you know, the oxygen comes to your, you know, brain and like, I don't know if it's, you, professor may know better that aspect, but, you know, something is there which keeps the intelligence quite sharp. So one of the aspects is now the cyber aspect we are also working on and we'll be actually having the, for the Indian government a seminar on, uh, I think it will be on November or so, about that, you know, cyber security and like that. Anyhow, okay, so, but I know this is an, because ambassador speak, you know, last three years I've been traveling with Mr. Sarma, the ambassador, Ashok Kumar, he's uh, from Delhi and he's, you know, she's a good friend also due to this, you know, cooperation. But uh, I have to say I never heard so much stories about corruption than during his period. He's very open with that, you know. And uh, therefore I like to say one thing. Wherever there is, uh, this is a definition by the academics worldwide, you know, it means the ultimately it starts from the, let's say this example of eating meat, I don't preach now, you know, whoever is, has their diet, whatever, but you know, it's the degradation of the moral values. We don't care, we can kill anybody and then therefore we can, so in that sense, you know, any degradation has actually a lot to do with our uh, values. So, just to say frankly, you know, there are two options for this thing, you know. Do not worry if there are some of your friends who like to steal, then they will be the poorest in the next life. You know, that is, this is just directly from Gita, this is directly from Manu, it's from the, you know, it doesn't require a lot of brain to steal. You know, it's an easy thing, you know, anybody can, you know, you know, if you would like, you could steal from the money something. And of course, Manu also gives the years, seven years, it will be revealed or something like that. So I have to say, I reveal to you, once in my life, there was an apple which has been dropped, you know, we have been living a kilometer from here and I was five years old and I took the apple without asking the lady, the host, whose apple that was, but besides of that, I have never done anything in that field, you know. So, uh, thank you. And no problem with uh, prosperity. You know, you're, you're satisfied with that thing, what you have, and then, you know, you know, life goes. So, if you just live according to your means now, and I like to say one thing, this is all also just to say to you from Gita, Whatever salary you are getting now, it's not based actually this life. It's based on the previous lifetime. Now you are just, otherwise then let's say for example this uh, Mirka, a nice lady who was guiding you, she has a very good salary, she has very good posts, she's one of the city leaders and like that. But there are a number of MBAs unemployed. So is it about education? The others have the same education, even better. Like, for example, my education is just level of MA, but I'm getting the salaries beyond that, you know. <laughs> so it's an, it's an, of course, PhD is under the eternal progress, but we have so many things to be done before. So it comes from the, the salary comes because you do your duty, but the amount comes from the previous life. And whatever we are doing now, that will be gained in next. So if you now are just satisfied, you administrators, you had, you know, you have a high post, so you have enough salary for living. So if you just are satisfied with that, then in like next life of taking care of citizens and you know properties, whatever you have, you will be rich. So therefore, you have to, these two choices. But the first one is preferred. Many cases. Ambassador said to me that half of the money to the Indian IFS, meaning Indian Forest Services, is going to the corruption. 
He sent me that guy. Foreign service or forest service? For, forest service, no, not foreign. Not there are two IFS. Ambassador is from foreign service. Yeah, he's from forest service. He's from a foreign service, but he said that related to the forest service. <laughs> Uh, but whatever, you know, maybe his uh, emphasis, he also said that uh, most of the Finns are atheists, which is not true. So, but just to say some money may go somewhere else that it's meant. He said, but still you are doing the, one of the best departments in the whole India. So what about if the whole money would be invested where it belongs? So uh, this is just my, you know, yeah, he didn't spoke about the Training of politicians. No, no, he is. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that that could be also taken up. Somehow, other he was silent with that aspect. So. <laughs> I, I have to say, to tell you, I know technically all these things, but I just don't like to touch this. And please, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you mean, still a little defined that I replied to the right question. You mean the life uh, time, you mean what? No, you said that you know, you go to this life to get a better life. Yeah. Uh, so, have you researched on the various lifetimes that uh, one passes through? Oh, that, that, the, yeah, yeah. There, there is even a Western, uh, I think he's now already gone, but he was the most uh, famous uh, scientist in that field who studied the reincarnation, his name is uh, Jan Stevenson. So he found this pattern, but uh, Manu, which ultimately comes from the Lord himself, you know, has studied that all because it's his uh, creation. So we kind of, uh, uh, you know, how would I say, um, take the notice of the modern day researchers, but that inductive or deductive, you know, we more lie on the deductive that, you know, Sastra is like, you know, saying already that, but it has to be researched down to this level, so you are right. And that's one of the mistakes the religionists are normally doing, that they kind of take it just, just to believe it or not, but it has to be. But Mr. I know at least, you know, Mr. Jan Stevenson, who did that a lot, but I think he's just now gone. He was an American researcher. He found that pattern in those, uh, you know, she's actually our former president. <laughs> Mrs. Halone, I see herself, you know, appeared like that, so otherwise I wouldn't book, it's, I, uh, it's uh, in the web pages, but uh, we who are more on the, um, like I said, comprehensive security side, we could say that at least some aspects he was a little neglecting. So now the present presidents and the whole government is taking very seriously that uh, there are some realistic aspects that has to be recognized as long we are, you know, living in this. So I take this still shortly. This philosophy which uh, can be applied to so many. This, I, I spoke about this to the Finnish uh, uh, government, or actually the two departments, the Department of Justice and Education. And they, because this is more like, you know, there are different things, you know, that people are thinking they, by entering the country, they already share all the ARTA, all the different social benefits, educational benefits, study grants and all that. But this line is from, duty to or dharma, then artha, then karma, and then moksha. It doesn't go first artha, and then if we, uh, then we do our duty, no. Every, the Finland is, uh, you know, in that sense, well-to-do country because people have been very duty-pound and respectful, you know, respected due to their, their duty. So, you know, this has to be, you know, this is just, uh, it's actually, you can take it from psychological angle, but this is 
<laughs> directly from the Kita like that. So it's, it has some, how would I say, very logical thing. No art, uh, no valuable things will come if nobody is not doing their duties. So art includes women, it includes the facilities, it includes the, the uh, money, Lakshmi itself, the salary, they are all art. So if that is taken care of, then, you know, then, so our choice is whatever Dharma has been already done, has been done, meaning related to the state before. But now we are in the position of administrators, we can choose how we use that art properly. So that's where the previous problem comes. Sorry if I made you awake by that corruption point done by Mr. Sarma, but you know, that's where the problem, if we are on the proper side, we make the proper decision, no problem. But that is where the problem lies in our choice. You have independent good posts, you can do proper choices, or at least in Finland, if it's not there in India, at least here, there has been plenty of politicians who have misused, meaning on the politician level, and also there has been plenty of administrators who have misused their position. When the Arta comes, the idea kind of a, a little, makes them a little confused. So that's where the knowledge is needed. So, you know, just to say shortly about that. So this is just a, uh, uh, you know, comment. He was just last week, we did a leadership seminar for the ISKCON leaders in Helsinki. So he, I just asked him just about, a little about, and he just mentioned this point that, of course, you know, because like you are dealing directly with the, you know, like a visible form of the Lord's nature. And there are laws, you know, they, they, trees don't grow upside down, you know, and, you know, spring doesn't come after autumn or something. Here in Finland it can do like that. No problem. We have little, you know, flexible season. This is summer. Who are you? Are from South India? Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't. You would take this as a joke, you know. Is this a summer? Is a little. So, so therefore, this aspect, uh, you know, of uh, seeing the Lord's, you know, nature working under the laws of certain laws makes easier actually. The spiritualism makes easier to follow the mundane laws because we already have appreciation towards the higher laws, so they are not conflicted. And, and therefore, how would I say, those who are emphasizing a little more to understand the spiritual laws will never lose. This came up just, uh, we were with Ambassador in the University of uh, Eastern Finland. She's from there, but the, the main, head com main campus is in Kuopio and there was this, you know, cooperation uh, related to the minings. And Ambassador said that, frankly saying, it happens so that they, this is again from Mr. Sarma. I can say it, he's already in Delhi, but, you know, he said that because they are buying just a small land in order to get all the environment permissions for that. And then when they enter there, that is, was just the beginning of the, you know, they have much more broad area to work. Pollution will come, but because of, you know, employment will be higher. Please. Uh, Ashok Kumar Sarma. Ashok Kumar. Yeah, he's ambassador, ambassador of India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, he's very clever. And so he said that then when it comes to the reality, then the pollution is there. People will come due to that sick very fast and like that. So many, so there are long term results, there are short term results. So I would say, better to focus to the long-term ones. But it takes a little more, like here in Finland, they are actually, they have this vision a lot, you know, like for example, you came now via this, uh, you know, uh, harbor here. You could swim there. It's completely pure water. No waste from the home, so anything is allowed. There is a swimming pool, I go there every day on the other side, there, or a swimming place there. So you don't find one waste and even if you find 
If you happen to find one, you know, like somebody has thrown some paper, please inform us. That is actually, you know, that is punishable act. So therefore, you know, they have a, but in the short term it could be, oh, why, you know, just let the waste go there and like that. So that, that's a long term vision and Finland has been very successful with that. So better to do and there is an, you know, working hours, there is a lot of safety -ness. She could tell, of course, the other side how much that costs, you know, if there is a labor. You have to pay a lot for this insurance, but it's a little more on the safety side in India. I think you, in general, they don't take so much trouble for this kind of things, you know. Uh, average age for, you know, Riksa Chwala there in Delhi, how much it is, you know, 35 years or so. I was in Delhi just not long ago. I mean, pollution seems to get quite high. Would have some, there was the chief minister from Delhi, this Manish, what was his name? Manish Yeah, yeah. He was just, I was traveling with him, an ambassador here in Finland. There was, you know, he, yeah, yeah. So we had a, some, you know, I was in, in Delhi just quite recently, and I have to say, I've been there all these years always landing there, but now the pollution looks, seems to be so. This aspect of Shreyas and Preyas, something has to be done for that. Metro is a good step. Metro is a good step. You know, electrical cars, good step. The environmental aspects to be followed in those factories, like you go to the a little highway to the Agra side, you, I mean, you know what we speak about. So there is no same EU rules that this factory, there is actually just uh, 1.5 kilometers distant, there's a huge paper factory. But do you smell or sense it? No. She can tell much more about those directives, but they are quite high. So they cost a lot in the beginning. There was a, com you know, can we invest so much? Yeah, well, they invest, their people will be more happy and the whole, this is actually one of the, um, cooperation cities when India is now developing the smart cities, 100 smart cities. So we come here regularly with ambassador because this UPM Kümene is a big, you know, paper factory here. It's the biggest, is it biggest in Finland? Yeah, so they, they uh, produce also biodiesel now. I was just on the way to change my diesel Toyota, but I don't do that now. Biodiesel seems to be a good one. So, they, this one aspect is there. Uh, just shortly, you know, this is just properties where I'm, we are residing. Who of you are just coming from the second and left? West Bengal side. Are you? Yeah, you are there. I mean, Mayapur and. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like that. So then uh, the left one is Tirupati. It's, who of you are from, uh, uh, now Tamil Nadu is not any, oh, Tirupati is not part of Tamil, but Nadu, but, yeah, yeah. So, so you are there, and uh, this is Chuhu, who is from uh, Maharashtra, sir? So, and then of course, here is our Delhi, Mandri, east of Kailas. Is somebody from Delhi area? Yeah, it's a uh, Iskon Mandir. It's on the other side of uh, Baha'i Lotus Temple. Yeah, east of east of Kailas. Yeah, there is. We have the glory of India project and like that. It's a you know multi-million project. Have to say, this corruption side. I like to be frank with you. Also, Iskon has sometimes problems with that. Like our previous temple president, Mahamantra, who was someone other we found. You know, some meetings, I'm, I'm participating regularly in the meetings in Mayapur. And I could be one of the cheapest in Mayapur, but then where would my holiday be, you know, not in Mayapur. I didn't enter there, but the thing is that, uh, that sometimes happens, but we, you know, that money somehow had a lot of money, like Tirupati, you know, that, you know, how much money is coming there. But actually it's now not anymore Sri Vaishnavas, it's under the government. 
But the corruption is wherever the artha is there, it tends to come there. So we sometimes also, even now Mayapur, we have some light problem which is soon solved. You know, some people kind of forget to give the money for the new temple project. So that always happens. That's there, so it's not that, you know, I just said that, you know, what I already said, but uh, it's an... It's surprising that uh, <laughs> For Forrest is still yeah. saying that he was quite yeah. defined with that. Of which he might not be knowing much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the I leave it, leave it to you. I just keep you awake. But uh, that was still. I didn't speculate that comment, you know. And Vrindavan, of course, you know that is our. I th how many of you have visited this con Vrindavan? Just to, you know, of course, you know. That's something that everybody knows. I have to say I stay a lot in that area, but I stay at Kovardhan. Kovardhan, yeah, we had, at Kovardhan we have a castle. There was, you know, some Rajasthan old king who built, he was a worshipper of Giriraj. Sir, yeah. coming back to corruption, I think uh, whatever you have said is the one all segment of corruption. Right, that right. Is, you, are, you are targeting individual corruption. Corruption at the individual level. Right, right, right. Now we are corruption at the societal level. Right. Corruption at the national level. Right. Most of the developed countries, the way they are treating the developing countries. Right. What kind of corruption? How would you define that? Those kind of corruption. Yeah, like, I, let's say pollution. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. Let's say developed countries are forcing the cutting of uh, emissions on developing countries. Whereas the yeah. more load to the environment, the yeah. best is giving. Yeah. What kind of corruption is that? That you are right. So therefore, I say that this is ultimately what it is. Finland is also has an official corruption. One of the richest men are uh, lawyers. You know the real estate, different kind of things, psychology side like that. So, but they are like you know, like nowadays in India, you say fixed price which means, you know, they don't park you in the, you know, Lloyd Bazaars, you know, shops, you know, but fixed prices or whatever. So the similar way, there is an included corruption, you know, like to the system, it's already there. And uh, for example, I would say that even administration, in some cases like EU, I don't say it's useless. But how much money goes, for example, let's say EU is asking us the money which they built the roads for us. So, you know, but how much the administration before they divide that money is already, so there is corruption any level. So the overall taxes becomes also, if the administration is too heavy, it also may become because of the duties are not so well, uh, you know, I, I like to show you one more slide, you know, which uh, gives the, that, to that I come a little later. I discussed with the president, who is our old friend, you know, just here, just 200 meters from here. This picture is from the last year, we did also discuss in that time, but uh, just 200 meters from here, here was, he was here on 10th of this month. So, he said that the spiritual, there was a longer discussion, but you know, we had 20 minutes or so. But he said that the no society, I, I mentioned him because he mentioned the previous day in uh, Mikhaili, he mentioned in St. Michel, he mentioned that the spiritual integration would be needed. I said, do you mean that it means like the, the, that there are no societies if there are no common values and attitudes and like that? And he said, the attitude is the most important. Yeah, if someone needs the facilities, facilities are just on the right from, but I, I'll finish in uh, four minutes or so. So that aspect is there that the, the uh, you know, corruption is, uh, comes also just, how would I say, the wrong attitude. So it has many different levels. I took here one which is kind of a little, you know, you know, of course, you know, Mahabharat's, you know, Draupadi's story is famous. Therefore, I didn't put you any text of that, you know. But uh, 
seated in, you know, you know the whole story how the war took place, but it has a lot to do of this misbehavior. Bisma was there. He's nowadays in Kuruk, that was still lying on the, you know, due to that offense, he was shooted, you know, and like that. So, so one aspect of the corruption is actually, which is a good question of this gentleman, is actually the misbehave towards one of the most, you know, how would I say, delicate thing towards the ladies. We were just uh, uh, with Ambassador uh, there in uh, Kuopio, you know, a month or two ago, and we were looking actually the alarm systems, because in India, if you like to, you know, here everything is centralized. So there, if you call some harassment for the ladies, or you call for the pollution or your ambulance, so it's different kind of, you know that better. But we were looking at that aspect, uh, you know, the centralized system. Finland is very high tech. Finland is divided only three areas. And if something happens here, for example, our cent center for any alarm, police, fire brigade, ambulance, anything, is in Kuopio. Kuopio is quite distant, actually. And if Kuopio goes down, let's say, some cyber, you know, hits, then the same operation can be led from Rovaniemi. So we are quite developed in that sense. We are most developed, I would say, you know. It's, yeah, but still, you know, there is something, you know, what creates this kind of, a, like the sexual violence there in India has been broadly broadcasted. Still, ambassadors at me in presence is very much less than here in the West. But because, you know, these cruel facts, so that has something to do with this, how would I say, this is actually a picture from uh, La Peranta. You came quite near that. Oh, well, there's a Russian text and maybe some workers speak better that language, but, but I, I would take this another point of view. It's just, you know, that, uh, you know, how would we say, there is always the problem <laughs> to deal properly with any valuable things. So therefore, this aspect, you know, created the whole Kuruksetra warfare. And this kind of a thing. So you have something strong, which is your family unit. I mentioned this in, in those high class. They're considered to be the best in the world. This Finland in the PISA is now in the second, which is the estimation of education. And, from that point of view, we went to the Pune and uh, Mumbai, we were like the gurus, you know, sitting on Vyasa-san there. I have to say, I could have become guru already 10 years back, but I, I never stepped forward like that. I could have become, but I didn't. Uh, so, but the thing, you know, that, uh, that uh, I mentioned them that uh, uh, diversity percent in Finland, we are very high in mathematics, very high in different sciences, but diversity percents are 52, I think, now. So that means over more than half are divorcing, and in America, where I have been in the visiting professor, it was already in 2000s. So there was actually, there was a wedding party, and then, then there was a divorcing party. <laughs> you know, like marketing, at the, I'm free again, like that. So this is, dear gentlemen, this is, the corruption is much more highly developed here in West. And therefore, you know, we are not free from the corruption. I'd just like to little point it to you, something which Ambassador kind of uh, made me aware. But not that he was taking his very much welcoming you. No, no, don't take it like that. It's just a warm welcome, you know, but this aspect is there. So there is restaurants there. This is... I have office just a hundred meters distant from that, and it's the highest class technopolis, you know. Technopolis is a high class, you know, office here in La Peranta. So in that sense, you know, just to say the point that you understand. Corruption is all different levels. So since there is this, uh, uh, I'd like to show you the four pillars of success are this is Maharaj Yudhisthira and Mahabharat, focus, endeavor, and daiva. So there has to be this dharana aspect, mindfulness. There has to be a lot of endeavors. 
and there has to be ultimately God's blessings. So in West has been multi-million business, just that this one Australian guy, he wrote a book which, where he mentioned the first two ones, Focus and Endeavor. But they are just, you know, the thing is, you understand this point, they are just so selfish, they think everything happens because I'm the center of everything. So when I think something and I do something, this is called so-called New Age movement. You know, it's just, sorry to say, it's a little mildly saying, speculation, or let me say in our language, rubbish. Daiva, the Lord's blessings. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, there is another secret. I made it, you understand, kind of a light joke. This is also, this, she's actually Vrinda Devi. She's guiding the whole, she's managing the whole spiritual world. So, uh, quite good position, you know. Can any of us reach that position? So, therefore, and not only for that, but like, you know, you, you can easily sing on lesser time, Rade Kovinda. What is the first name? It's Rade. Uh, so, therefore, you know, it's mentioned in the Sastras, it's mentioned by Sila Prabhupada also that the women are actually more powerful than men. So, if we fight against that fact, good luck. I mean, good luck. But there is still, like you know, in India, that is still, you know, the, the dominating area for any woman, doesn't matter whether they are working or not, is at the home environment. So, any man who claims that they are Lord in their home, I mean, show me, they are cheaters, you know, it's not the reality. But the man has to have also their position, that's the work and like that, and of course they both can work, there is no problem, but woman's mind is more strong, it's actually stronger, so therefore better to reciprocate properly with that thing, you know, that's one of the things, and if this, just to say this other extreme, would I, would I just show and mention, you know, which has been a lot, because I have to say I'm lecturing in all the main universities in Finland all the time, and one year have to repeat all the time about this, rape, sexual, you know, misbehave in India towards women. I mean, what I have to do with that? Nothing. You know, but the thing is that it's so much, you know, the Westerns, they are just taking some point and they are throwing you all the time until you clarify that actually they are the worst in this case. But that's kind of a, you know, so therefore your point of this corruption is a good one. So just to say this, keep it in your mind. Of course, him you know very well, but it's ultimately a lot of our activities related to the leadership, the private life, social life, anything. Yesterday, here was, I was just bicycling in the morning. I had yesterday day off, and actually have to say today after this event, which is already like a shifting time for me to the holiday. I'm going to the holiday, actually. So, so. But yesterday there was from South India, from Tirupati, there was uh, five to seven, you know, persons here. They have been working for Nokia before, but nowadays some other high-tech company. And, you know, I just, you know, I kind of just, uh, you know, such a character. They invited me. They came to this city and they have made their, I thought they have idlis, but they have chapatis because this is cold season of the year. So. They, they invited me for breakfast there uh, at the harbor nearby, there is a nice park there. So this is, of course, I didn't went there because I knew they had been cooking approximately for their family and I had a breakfast with my parents here. But just to say the point that, you know, that's a culture. That's an what it's with, and that has a lot to do with this, what we call the character development. I'm lecturing actually what I have to say, I'm not lecturing in universities, I'm lecturing for the government officers and, and uh, what is that called, Finnish security policy and like that. I'm lecturing to those, you know, about the security aspects, but when I'm lecturing in university, I'm mostly lecturing about Indian pedagogics and psychology. Indian? Yeah, traditional Indian, which you could say Vedic education. You could say in the terms of Vedic education. And the funny thing, they are more interested about that here in the West, which is the highest in the world in education, or second highest now, than in general in India. 
yeah, it's a funny thing. Finnish academics, they are really high on this thing and they are very much interested about the, because they have seen one professor, he's, she said to me, I've been lecturing, I'm like more like even located to the University of Oulu, my previous wife was there and like that. So the University of Oulu, they, they have a lot of, you know, education and different kind of uh, things related to that. And, and she said that there is no education without character development. So he said that already years back. So the character and that, that, you know. So just to say summary, since time is a little, but I didn't went over the time. You came a little bit in the unflexible time, but you know, no problem. So if you take good care of uh, not only citizens, I could say your nature under you. I mean, you are ruling technically the nature from, uh, you know, of India. So if you take good care of that, then uh, you take good care of your future life. So just keep it that mind. You have actually very, uh, how would I say, uh, down to earth, uh, you know, possibility to show people that there are higher laws, they appeared here and like that, take care of them and you know, you will be prosperous yourself. Reminding also what Yuristir must say, or as Yuristir, that anything one likes to, can't be done by, you know, like left hand, it's the saying, just, you know, whimsically or something. And uh, this is like the modern day phenomena, but it's already existing in Kuru, etc. This we talk about more, and this we talk about even the president of the country and he said yeah definitely need it so ultimately when that level is together then the other levels will follow but they are not separate the connection has to be known and that is called Veda so myself I have been now studies that now actually 26 years and up to, I would say, the last 10 years until that, I considered myself just a neophyte student of, although I studied under the best gurus in India. But still, you know, kind of a good to take a humble position. But nowadays we could say that, you know, after spending, like the South Indians, they, some of them have been already in Finland or abroad from India 22 years, they said, they have been living less in India than we did <laughs> during this. I'm not saying that only living there is enough, but if you take some time for little, how would I say, from the seeing update vision, you have such a treasure there nobody has. They found the greatest treasure of some South Indian temple. India became the richest country in the whole world. Whether the Artha is divided properly, that's another thing, but I have heard so many times this 7.8, you know, growth uh, from Ambassador when we visit so many different places, it's amazing. But the biggest growth and the biggest diamond is still your knowledge which covers from material to spirit. There is nothing this, you know, here in the West compared. So be a little proud of that and that way saying I could say Keep your values, keep your attitudes, maybe applied a little differently here in the West on the public side, but that keeps you together. Because like I've been heading the East Con Finland also, maybe last two, two decades and like that, so I can say that, you know, the Indians are the, wherever they come here, they are now here, I think, 5,000. They always find themselves. But how many Finns are even knowing who is living nearby? Somehow or another, this, you know, we could say, Personalism is involved because there are same culture, same values and attitudes, of course differences are as well there. So I don't keep you too much, it, it's just for me it's like a pleasure just to talk with the intelligent and since I'm belonging like we could say the same Varna, you know, you know, administrators, so therefore it's like talking to family members. Thank you very much for your you know, for your attention, and since you are on the way to Pukka, are you then? Yes, so, so many thanks for you, Timo, and I think that that was 
Yeah, maybe yeah. good. Yes, just a moment. But I'll, I'll say something first, and then you can continue if that's okay. So I think that this, this was nice starting for the Monday uh, to think of some, something about the basic, basic facts. But also I would just say that um, these, all these leaders and directors here in forestry sector, it's uh, uh, very familiar to you to think about principles of continuity, laws of nature, and in general, all the foresters globally share the same, same thinking to think how the nature is working, taking care of our nature, but also all those who are living out of it, also the human beings. So, and, and what Timo said about the uh, changing attitudes, that's maybe nowadays our biggest challenge, how to change the attitudes of all the people how to uh, change the attitudes towards sustainability and go into the bioeconomy. And uh, doesn't uh, matter what is our spiritual thinking or religion, but that, that we all share. We have to change our, also our own attitudes so that we can go towards bioeconomy. I have to so say, I like to say that this uh, five minutes was the discussion, a little few words which we exchanged with President Sauli Niinistö. Fifteen minutes he told me about just the attitude aspect. And he said he talked that with 15 other presidents in the Europe just recently. So he said attitude is the most important thing. Like we in our movement we said that Krishna consciousness, consciousness, but you know attitude is the most important. So, so that is fortunately the aspect we all can do something for them. Oh, sorry, but I couldn't just to repeat what President said. Uh, sir, there is a table for you. This was for the city leaders, so. Oh. Oh. Most respected Mr. Timo Kuyvanen, oh, honored faculty and uh, oh. professor and knowledgeable oh. in Indian culture and Indian customs. Right, right, right. It's, it's my pleasure on behalf of Indira Gandhi National Forest Academy, our oh. course coordinators, yes, yes, our yeah. colleagues from Indian Forest Service and from India as a whole to thank you for this whole lecture, whole session oh. in a pleasant environment. And on such important topics as metaphysics, administration, yeah. Yeah. spiritualism, strategy, administration, public policy, which is so relevant not only in India, but I, I feel all across the world.